Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkle. Hello. And we're going to talk about micromanagement at Lucasfilm. Well, that and the fact that Patty Jenkins apparently was trying to talk to Mike Stackpole yeah. about Room Squadron, which would have been a good thing. Yeah, and it seems like some micromanagement might have well, probably destroyed up, that deal. If not, it'll end up screwing it up for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that. You did an article on it today. I'm going to let you uh, lead this video, but before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 261,000 subs. Yay! Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about Disney. We talk about Disney Star Wars, not nearly as much as we used to, because like so many other uh, pop culture icons, Disney Star Wars is is in the gutter right now mm -hmm. a lot of people don't care uh videos about disney star wars don't really perform unless it's making fun of disney star wars well, and then when they get stuff back going up people like like the mandalorian they have to turn around with boba fett and destroy it again yeah there's this crazy rumor out there and it was on uh, i think it was on bounding in the comics i don't know if it's true or not but they're like oh in season three of the mandalorian the rumor is that grogu baby yoda this. is going to be piloting ig11 like a, I have like a mech this. suit. I have heard this. And I'm thinking to myself, God, that is so stupid. And then I remember some of the shit that they did in the book of Boba Fett. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh, they I believe totally it completely. It. it sounds like something they would do. And the book of Boba Fett, they ruined it because they made Boba Fett not like Boba Fett. And then they spent all this time without Boba Fett in episodes. And it was basically the Mandalorian 2.5. And that's what I think we're headed again because it's this, it's this plot by committee bullshit yeah. that they keep ruining things. Well... We're going to rewind it a bit, because Patty Jenkins, if you remember, had, was doing a Rogue Squadron movie. She was very excited about it, because her dad was a fighter pilot. She was all about doing it. Mm -hmm. And then there were talk that she wasn't going to be doing it, um, because it was indefinitely delayed. Okay? Scheduling conflicts. Right, because she was supposed to be doing Cleopatra, but then other people said it wasn't about scheduling conflicts. It was more about the fact they tried to micromanage everything. Mm -hmm. um, but they got that worked out, apparently. And then it came out from a tweet that this one person, Just Brad, had posted that I guess he was at GalaxyCon and he mm -hmm. got to talk to Michael Stackpole. Um, and he was excited because Patty Jenkins had called him, apparently. And that he had been in the early, right on, early on, he was, you know, kind of talked to about it, which makes sense because if you're not familiar, he's the one who wrote the X-Wing Rogue Squadron books. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what they were, you know, kind of, I think, in a way, basing it on. And those, yeah, were, those yeah. are now legends, of course, because it was back in the 90s. Very good books. Love them. Um, people were very excited on Twitter. They're like, you know, this is the kind of thing I like hearing about. Uh, I have hopes for, you know, Rogue Squadron and the X-Wing series is my favorite Star Wars book series. Um, when you start getting very hopeful for the Rogue Squadron movie, don't get your hopes up yet. Because he ta she talked to him early on does not mean that Star Wars current day is going to listen. Yeah, they're, I mean, look, they threw out George Lucas's treatment of 789. They gave it the treatment? They gave it the treatment. Yeah, they threw George Lucas's outline for what he thought the Star Wars sequel should be about. They threw it in the trash can as soon as they bought Star Wars. So if they're not going to listen to George Lucas, they're not going to listen to Michael Stackpole. No. And here's the thing, too. You know, how many movies have we seen where creative differences, quote unquote, when Kathleen Kennedy was involved, suddenly appeared and we had people like we saw it with Rogue One. We saw it with, or I'm seeing Solo. I'm sorry. Solo. We saw mm -hmm. it with uh, with Rise of Skywalker. Where they kept having these movies that were coming after and they kept having these directors assigned to them and then poof. They were gone. The directors were gone. Those movies weren't happening anymore. Yeah. Um, this is a pattern. Even I remember Comics Beat. I remember Heidi McDonald actually talked about all the uh, the delays and, and production upheaval with with uh, Lucasfilm. And she actually said it was it was Kathleen Kennedy. And that was back before the fandom menace back before comics gates. Now, of course, she probably would take the opposite, right, the opposite right. opinion. I mean, anymore, if you don't like Star Wars, the new Star Wars or any of that stuff, you're automatically labeled fandom menace. Whether you are or not is irrelevant. Yeah, so I thought this was interesting. Uh, this was 2017, talking about uh, Colin Trevorrow, who actually I think had a better treatment for Episode Nine than than what we actually got. Mm -hmm. Um, it built off of The Last Jedi, but it didn't, it didn't try to walk things back necessarily. They just kind of did the best they could do with what they well, had they left to they work with. Up. Yeah. There was nothing you could do to fix it, but, but yeah, Heidi McDonald 
was actually like, yeah, Kathleen Kennedy is the problem. Kathleen Kennedy is always a name that comes up. Mm -hmm. uh, there are always creative differences. Uh, there are lots of uh, decisions being made about Star Wars by committee, and uh, but ultimately it's it's her fault. She is Darth Vader, basically. And uh, you know, so yeah. Now now it's like it's it's coming out. I don't think we're going to realize the full extent of the potential damage done by Kathleen Kennedy and all the stuff that could have been until she's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if we'll ever get the full extent, but like we saw with Obi-Wan show, like the, they had to re remember we threw all the scripts out and rewrote it yeah, because yeah. she didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And here's what she said about it recently. We're looking ultimately to make a hopeful, uplifting story. And that's a little tricky when you're starting out the character in the state that Obi-Wan would be coming off of Revenge of the Sith. It's a pretty big period of time. You can't just wave the magic wand with any writer and arrive at a story that necessarily reflects what you feel. Exactly. So I'm sure that the story originally was something that went along with what he felt. Mm -hmm. But you want to make it uplifting. No, you want to shove in your shit is what's going on. Because now you're trying to shove in all these other characters. You're trying to shove that people know and, and from the cartoons and stuff. Yeah. And you're trying to shove in um, Leia. Because the, the rumor is that basically it's going to be, you know, Obi-Wan saving Leia. Even though he's, his job is to take care of Luke. Yeah, I kind of got the vibe from the original Star Wars movie that Leia and Obi-Wan had never crossed paths. Mm -hmm. This is how they're going to retcon uh, her naming her kid Ben because he meant jack, right, cause, yeah, jack shit to her in the original Yeah, trilogy. and people were yeah. like, now Darth Vader is supposed to battle Obi-Wan like a couple times in the show. And they're like, wait a minute. That was the big deal with A New Hope. Was it was the yeah, it was like a throwdown, and this is the first time they'd seen each other in like 20 years, right? Yeah, right, yeah. but you know, no, we have to change all that because you know, this is this point by point committee thing, which is funny because we talked about this back when Patty Jenkins was kind of stepping away from it or was indefinitely postponed. Mm -hmm. We had mentioned before that Matthew, is it Baloney, Baloney, mm -hmm. um, from Hollywood Reporter had said that you know, Jenkins was frustrated by the micromanagement of select Lucasfilm's executives, Kathleen Kennedy, mm -hmm. eventually opting to. To pursue other opportunities while Lucasfilm worked on fixing its internal problems. It was probably, well, that kind of leads to that whole, you know, that they were fight, in fighting that people keep yeah. saying about. Yeah. And then um, he added, that's not unusual, of course, but it's a laughably reoccurring problem at Lucasfilm under President Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. It says, agents, top filmmakers are dying to make a Star Wars movie until they sign on and experience the micromanagement and plot point by committee process. What's it, Lucasfilm Story Group? Probably. And they're a bunch of dipshits, as yeah. we know. So they're like, you know, so what we're going to get is, is going to be more of the same. Because even when people try to do something different, or like Patty Jenkins tried to go back and talk to people, you know, the guy who wrote the the popular Rogue Squadron books, mm -hmm. um, don't hold your breath because Kathleen Kennedy and them are going to get hold of it. Yeah, and I mean, and they're going to just they're just going to piss all over it until it's unrecognizable. Throw yeah. it out and make you do it again. They'll be like, yeah, we need to tie this thing into this comic book and this novel that nobody And the Galactic read. Star Cruiser. And the Galactic Star Cruiser. This is when the X-Wing pilots go stay at the Galactic Star Cruiser for a week on their training missions because it's, in, it's on their way. And also we need to have more diversity and inclusion. Oh, yes. Yes, you can go uh, ahead and talk about this. So, yeah, this is interesting. There was a, a, the PGA Awards, George Lucas and Kathleen Candy in the same room together. And... Uh, uh, yeah, she looks happy to be there. George well, he like, looks oh. legitimately happy to be he there. He does, yeah. But it was interesting. They accepted the award. And uh, George was like, yeah, hey, you know, uh, he's talking about the technical aspects of movie making and trying to push the envelope. And Kathleen Kennedy is just talking about uh, diversity and inclusion because initiatives. Because it works so great with the Star Wars trilogy. I mean, and, and they keep arguing that it never was diverse and inclusive, which isn't necessary. I mean, it wasn't a whole lot, but it was still diverse and inclusive. And the books especially were. Um, the gaming's the games have been. Yeah, so basically they've got her, in, you know, on the same level as George Lucas and Steven Spielberg because Kathleen Kennedy, I mean, here's the thing. Well, Kathleen Kennedy, regardless of what you think of her, and a lot of people don't like her, you know, she has been in Hollywood a very, very long time. When people said they were just going to shit can her, push her out the damn door. We said that wouldn't happen. You know, she's going to go live in a cardboard box. That's a nice fantasy, but they would find a way to do it if that happened they would find a way to do it and make it look like it was actually uh, her being promoted right, her choice or her choice her choice they move her to a different department like a promotion or they get rid of her and make it sound like it was her retiring yeah they wouldn't they wouldn't just like shit can her and tell everybody if she got if she suddenly got gone you wouldn't know it was it was them not her 
Yeah, so this is her this is her acceptance. Steve and George and I met at the dawning of a new age in motion picture history, and we worked side by side through one revolution in our industry after another. Revolutions not only in the means of movie making and in the ways movies uh, reach audiences, but also in the composition of our business as a woman, uh, our, as women, artists of color, LGBTQ and differently labeled artists and producers have fought for and won a place at the table, propelling our community toward more inclusive, diverse, richer, more sophisticated and nuanced sense of responsibilities for social, racial and economic justice. And and George Lucas is just like, yeah, it was cool to I mean, push the envelope and make new stuff, you know? <laughs> It's just like, so there, that's what you want. You want to know why this shit keeps getting worse or it's because it's plot by plot committee. Yep. Um, people want to do it and, and then they all leave for creative differences because they can't stand to work with certain people, most likely Kathleen Kennedy. She's out there going about, you know, diversity and inclusion. Well, we've seen their diversity and inclusion. You are so diverse and inclusive and so, you know, pro-social justice and racial justice that, yeah, you took Finn's part and shrunk, shrunk him down to practically nothing. And then he got removed from the one poster yeah, shrunk yeah. down in it, I guess, really small. China, um, right. Yeah, so, China you know, you like racially, that. you want to promote racial quality until it, you know, it hurts your bottom line. Um, honestly, I would have watched the movie. I would have liked the movies a hell of a lot more if Finn had been uh, a Jedi in training, too. Uh, that is where it seemed to be headed. And then they just, they did a complete 180 with it. And I liked Finn and Poe. I thought what they did to them in the second movie was shit. Yeah, well. <laughs> All for the sense of, because the diversity just meant women. Yeah, we couldn't let those uh, minority actors. The force is the, female. The men upstage the the white woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we couldn't. Yeah, the force is female. Um, so anyway, it's a load of shit. It is what it is. I would love to see them actually, you know, get in touch with people and work with people that made things that people liked, and maybe use them as consultants and try to like, because you can you can organically add diversity and inclusion things to something and still have a great story and then still make it like something that everybody loves without like you know what they did with like the Last Jedi. It was yeah. women. When we mentioned women, women are better. We mentioned women, and that and I'm uh, being a girl. I was the one who said I thought this was shit. I was the, you weren't. It was me. Yeah, I was I was cautiously optimistic, but yeah, it's uh, Last Jedi though. I almost I almost walked out of theater. It was so bad. Leia went flying through space. I'm like, come on. Yeah, our, our son on. refers to that space Jesusing herself back oh into the God. ship. It was so stupid and so insulting, actually, in some ways to characters. I mean, not just Luke Skywalker, but to Leia, too. Yeah. So, anyway, we're wrapping this up. I think we're going to wrap this up. Uh, basically, nothing is going to change at Lucasfilm until Kathleen Kennedy is gone, and I don't expect her to, to leave anytime soon. You know, uh, she's well enough, old enough to, to, to retire. Oh, yeah. She's yep. not going to. Nope, she's going to stay out of spite. Out of spite. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to wrap it up? Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.